So I snagged a whole box of uh, little flashlights off Amazon, and they're quite nicely made, uh, nice aluminum body, pretty rugged, but they have one really annoying feature. Uh, if I turn the light on, of course, you can see it's nice and bright, and if I shine that against the solar cell, and then look at the output of the solar cell, you can see a nice DC output, which means the light has no uh, flicker on it, which is, of course, fine. If you press the button again, um, it goes into a mode where it goes into a sort of a low-intensity light. And now, of course, if you look at the oscilloscope, it's actually producing 265 hertz, so it's just chopping the... Um, it's just chopping the light up. Now, actually, it's very hard to perceive that as a human, but you can see my camera, I think, actually may be picking it up. Kind of annoying, you don't really need a uh, less intense light. Uh, but then there's this last feature, which is just a loser. I hear it turn it on, uh, and it starts blinking at about 2.2 hertz. And uh, I have absolutely no idea why you'd want a flashlight to blink like this. Uh, I just want to see things with my flashlights. So anyways, we're going to tear this thing down. We're going to see what the design engineer did and see if we can rectify that. Uh, it's a single battery design. That's, that's going to be an important uh, point here in a minute as we analyze the circuit board. Okay, so I've uh, taken the electronics out of the flashlight. And uh, on the left-hand side there, you can see the... Uh, LED and its uh, metal housing, and then to the left of it, the uh, circuit board. And if we uh, zoom into that circuit board, uh, we can sort of sort down what we can see. There's uh, two integrated circuits, a uh, decoupling capacitor, a resistor, and a coil. The coil is kind of interesting. Uh, as we had seen, there's only a single battery, which is about one and a half volts. Uh, white LEDs need around three to four volts to uh, operate. So that means we have to have something called a boost regulator. And uh, a clear sign of a boost regulator is a uh, inductor and associated X to a small integrated circuit. Uh, basically what happens is the uh, voltage regulator uh, causes current to flow through the inductor and it cuts off and then the field collapses around the inductor uh, inducing a higher voltage and uh, classic design. The two integrated circuits basically are in series. Uh, one's a voltage regulator and one is something I will call the irritator. Basically the voltage regulator just generates a nice stable voltage and then the uh, irritator uh, goes in and chops it up, uh, going through those uh, three different modes. Nice thing about that, of course, is it's going to be pretty easy to uh, defeat. Uh, just simply lift the wire from the LED and move it over to the voltage regulator uh, and bypass that uh, irritator chip. And uh, if you do that, uh, the flashlight operates very beautifully. Turn it on, it turns on. If you turn it off, uh, it turns off. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm not the right market segment now for flashlights or something, but... Um, it seems like almost every LED flashlight you can buy has all these crazy modes, and uh, I, I just want a flashlight to turn on. Perhaps I'm no longer the target market, however. So here I believe is the voltage regulator. It uh, has a, uh, a FET dominating the right-hand structure and the control circuitry on the left. If you look down on the uh, bottom there, you can see two pads called 1A and uh, 2A. Uh, I suspect this is a, a variable voltage regulator, and what happens is if you bond out one wire, it becomes a fixed voltage regulator. If you bond with the other, you have to put down a uh, voltage divider uh, to create variable voltages. Now, of course, that would ca cause an additional money, and of course, that's not good for flashlights, so uh, they probably bonded out the fixed output. So here's the second eye, which I've called the irritator, uh, for I think that is its uh, only purpose in life. Uh, it's actually a fairly complicated uh, device because uh, the flashlight goes into these three modes, uh, full on, 50% on, and then uh, that sort of uh, blinking. And uh, even if you remove the power to the flashlight assembly, this chip seems to remember uh, its last state. So that implies there's some sort of uh, E-squared problem uh, type structure on it where it can actually hold the state. Uh, the uh, bottom portion there, FETs, and the top portion, of course, is uh, the logic. Uh, obviously, there is a marker for this, since uh, there's actually an added cost in the flashlight for the vendor to put this in. It wasn't free. And uh, if you'd like to have more details of these uh, dye photographs, I have them on my blog, electronupdate.blogspot.com.